Hello everyone, welcome to the 14th tutorial on a beginner's guide on how to twin motion. So, in today's video, we will be using the rendering part of twin motion and path tracing. Here, you have two images. On the left is without a render, while on the right is rendered. Do you see the, the big difference between one of them? From the greenery alone, or rather the vegetation, the sunlight, and the material, and as well as the lighting, you can see a big difference. Next up, I'll be showing you two videos. The one on the left is not rendered, while the one on the right is rendered. Do you see the difference between these two five-second video? Look at the trees, for example. The vegetation, the rocks, and the walls on the house itself, and especially the sky and lighting. You can see a big difference between the two of them. So, with that in mind, why don't we go ahead and try Twin Motion rendering for real? So, let's go to the settings in the dock. But for some reason, if this setting is grayed out like this, there. It's grayed out, right? That's because we're currently in the media mode. So, to enable this back again, just simply click this one, like so. Now, it's back, right? Okay, now, let's go back here. Go to settings. Here is actually the rendered part. If, if this is also grayed out for some reason and shows a warning like this, it means that your GPU is incapable of path tracing. Otherwise, it's workable, so clicking it alone would already activate the GPU tracing. You will see here a meter that eventually fills itself out, so let's wait for it to finish. Otherwise, it's going to come out blurry and pixelized. There, everything's done. So, unfortunately, once it's done, we cannot move our camera. We're going to be in static or in stay still mode, because if I were to move it like this, the path tracing would begin to reset again. Everything moving will come to a stay still stop. For example, if I were to put like, let's put a moving object here, like characters, animal, here we go. Okay, look how the cat is moving, but if I were to click this, everything's gonna stay static, even if it finishes rendering. There. Now everything looks good except the cat itself, of course. But if I were to move again, either I move my view or the mouse itself, the render's gonna end. Just like so. Okay, now let's remove this cat and let's go back out of the house. Don't forget to take this off in case you can't move properly. There. If I if this were on, everything would slow down and it's gonna be pixelized or there's like a noise static. So I'll turn this off. Let's go outside and go for a very cool view. Here would be a nice view. Now, if I were to render this by pressing R or clicking this button right here, look at the difference. Pretty fascinating, right? Let's wait for it to finish. Okay, now take a look at this, and if I were to move it, or rather turning off the render, you will see a big difference from that. Now, next up, we'll, we'll be rendering an image or a video. How do we do that? We're going to go through here. Remember, we already gone through how to make an image and a video export, right? But in this video, we'll be adding rendering as well. Don't worry, it's going to be quite simple and easy. So let's look for a good picture view first. I think would, this would be nice. So we can see the vegetation as well. Go to image, create image. You can use anything you want here, but I'd rather go back to create image so we can see how it's done from the start. Here it is. Let's make this trial. Now, more, 
it's a good practice to always make use of this first. So to make everything come clean, I'd like to make it a square, which is 800 by 800. There. Now let's go back to trial format. Then we go to render. That's it. Simply clicking this on will make it start the rendering process. Next up, the samples per pixel. The lower this is, the less quality you will be having. But of course, in exchange, it will be faster to render, and it will it won't make it won't give much tear on your GPU card. So if I were to max this, look at how long this gauge fills up. This might take a minute or so just to fill up, but if I were to make it 100, look how fast it fills up. All right, so the other here are options that will help us modify our beautiful rendering ideas. Next up, let's try doing in video. Same thing, go to video. Let's make a trial. This one. But one thing in video is, if I were to make this, it's actually difficult to determine what's going to look like. Because even if, let's for example, let's do this. Let's wait for this to fill up. And if I were to click this, we can't really see it properly. That's one of the issues we're facing here. So for us to avoid this, it would be better if we just quit mode and simply just export them, go to empty. You'll see the sign here. This means that the image is actually in a rendered state. So click this one. Next, we're going to go to video and this one. As you see, it's also in a rendered state. So that's it. Next up, we just click import. But of course, since it's rendered, this is going to take some time. Let's see how it's going to take. Okay, so um, I guess that's it for this tutorial. And look how long it's going to take. Now, you've finally known all the basics in Twinmotion, and you can finally play around on your own. So again, guys, that's it for this tutorial. For questions and suggestions, please do comment below. And if you find this tutorial helpful, do support me by liking and subscribing. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next one.